Hi folks. In this video I'm going to show you how I built a custom battery and enclosure for my new K-Weld spot welder. Just to clarify, this is not a paid sponsorship or promotion of any kind. When I started building the battery for the new motorcycle a few weeks ago, I discovered that my old welder, which is shown on the left of your screen, doesn't have enough power to make strong welds anymore after building the battery for the buggy, so I ordered a DIY K-Weld spot welder kit from Keenlab to replace it. Some of you have been asking what I use for a spot welder when I build batteries, so I thought it was a good opportunity to make a video about it. I'm not sure what the old welder has for a power source, but I do know that it's only rated for 5000 watts and was barely enough power for the job when I was building the buggy battery. Also, I could only get around a hundred and fifty welds per charge and it took a few hours to fully recharge. So it wasn't great, but I only paid sixty dollars for it a couple of years ago, so I got what I paid for. The K-Weld is made by Keenlab as a DIY kit that you put together yourself, which is basically just the PCB, a digital display, a foot switch, and the electro cables. The welder can handle a welding current of up to 2000 amps and has a voltage range of 4 to 30 volts DC, but Keenlab recommends limiting it to around 1500 amps and 12 volts to prevent damage to the welder with continuous use, which is still 3 to 4 times more powerful than my old welder. I have lots of used 38120 headway cells which have a very high 20C continuous max discharge rating that would work perfectly with the welder in a 4P3S configuration, so I decided to save some money and build my own power source instead of waiting to order the capacitor bank. A standard 12 volt car battery would also work, but it would be physically bigger and heavier than the headways, so I chose to use them instead. With the headway cells testing at 7 amp hours individually and used in a 4P3S configuration, they'll provide up to 28 amp hours at 9.6 volts nominal, or 269 watt hours, which is equivalent to around 968 kilojoules. Using an average 100 joules per weld pulse, I should be able to get around 9500 pulses per charge from the battery. That's twice as many welds that I use building the buggy batteries, so it should store more than enough energy for spot welding any battery that I build in the future without constantly being interrupted with the need to recharge, like the old welder. To keep everything tidy and clean, I also made a custom enclosure to house the battery and the welder together, which I 3D printed with my Ender 3 printers using carbon fiber PETG filament. Before printing the cell holders, I first printed a few test holders of various sizes to find the best fit that compensates for shrinkage after the print cools. Once that was determined, I printed the cell holders, the mounting brackets, and the enclosure panels. While those were printing, I assembled the spot welder itself and prepped the battery cells. The K-Weld arrived in a cardboard box and was packaged really well. As I mentioned earlier, the main kit includes the PCB, a digital display, a foot switch to trigger the weld pulse, the electro cables, and a 300 amp fuse with all the nuts and screws that's needed to put it all together. The first thing that I installed on the PCB were the brass standoffs, which will be used to mount the welder inside the enclosure. Then I installed standoffs on the digital display and mounted it to the PCB. Next, I installed the bus bars for the electrodes with socket cap screws and nuts and washers. Notice that one side of the washer has rounded edges and the other side is sharp. The rounded side should go toward the PCB to prevent scratching it when the nuts are tightened down. After the bus bars were fastened, I installed the 300 amp fuse and the electrodes. The positive electrode and power cable connects to both sides of the fuse, and the negative electrode connects to the lower bus bar, while the negative power cable connects to the upper bus bar.
I installed the power cables that K-Well provides for connecting the welder to the power source just to show where everything goes, but they're too short for what I'm doing so later I made longer and thicker cables to replace them. If you make custom cables for your own K-Weld, it's important to follow their instructions for sizing the cable so that you end up with the right amount of resistance to provide the power that you want without causing any damage. They explain everything in detail in their manuals. The last thing to connect to the PCB is the foot switch. It comes with a three wire cord, but only the red and white wires are needed so I cut the black wire short and connected the other wires to the terminals on the PCB. The welder also has an automatic mode that you can select so you don't need to use the foot switch, or you can eliminate the foot switch altogether by shorting the terminals that it connects to with a short wire, and the welder will power up in automatic mode when it's turned on. But I'll explain more about that when I start testing it. Once the welder was assembled, I prepped the battery cells by first checking their voltage and making sure that they're all within 5 hundredths of a volt of each other. Then I connected them all in parallel using aluminum bus bars so I could perform a bottom balance on them. A bottom balance involves connecting the cells in parallel so they will equalize with one another, and then discharging them close to their minimum operating voltage a few times before letting them rest for 24 hours, and then assembling them into a pack. The cells are all rated for the same capacity and voltage, but every cell is slightly unique from the other in terms of internal resistance, and they'll all charge and discharge at slightly different rates because of that. This is why a BMS is usually used to monitor individual cell voltage during discharge to prevent over-discharging the weakest cell, and help balance it when charging to prevent overcharging. However, because the boulder uses such high current and the cost of a BMS to handle it is so expensive, I opted not to use one for this project, for now. Despite popular belief, this can be done safely as long as your cells are matched reasonably, you have a way to monitor individual cell voltage while you're using or charging the battery, and you perform a top or bottom balance on the cells before assembling the battery, depending on the application that you're using it for. A bottom balance is best if you want to optimize the capacity of the battery and safely discharge all of it, like you would with an EV or this spot welder for example. A top balance is best for optimizing the charge in an application where the battery will spend more time having its charge topped up than it will be discharging to a lower level, like with an off-grid energy system. In my case, with a bottom balance I can keep an eye on the sum voltage displayed in the spot welder while using it, which also includes a low voltage warning alarm, without worrying about individual cell voltage creeping away from the rest of the pack. When I need to charge it, I can closely monitor the individual cell voltage during the first charge to find the sum voltage of the pack when the weakest cell reaches its max voltage before the others, and then set the charger to that sum voltage for the next charge in order to prevent it from overcharging. It's important to note, however, that if you perform a bottom balance on a battery and use a BMS or a balance charger to charge it, then you'll need to turn the balance mode off in order to keep the bottom balance on the pack and have it optimized for its purpose. If you keep the balance mode on, then your BMS or balance charger will attempt to top balance the cells when charging. That doesn't mean that using a BMS with a bottom balance is a waste because it can still monitor cell voltage and provide protection against over discharging and overcharging. After the bottom balance was complete, I assembled the cells in their holders and secured the holders together using the bottom panel of the enclosure. Then I began connecting these cells together using brass bus bars and plated screws that I salvaged from the Super Beast headway packs that I got from Battery Hookup. Notice that I included a safety divider in the cell holders to prevent shorting the pack out when I'm installing the bus bars. I also printed a thin guard to fasten over the ends of the cells after they're connected. Once the cells were connected, I performed the first charge on the pack where I monitored the individual cell voltage until the weakest cell reaches its max voltage and determined the best sum charge voltage for charging in the future. While the battery was charging, I epoxied an XT60 connector and a JST connector into a 3D printed mount which will later fasten to the back panel of the enclosure. The XT60 connector will connect to the positive and negative side of the battery, and the JST connector will connect to the negative and positive sides of the battery as well as the positive side of each cell. These will be used for charging and monitoring cell voltage in the future.
After the battery was charged, I wired the connectors, reinstalled the cell guards, and installed the main power cables with a 300 amp switch for turning the welder on and off. The cable comes with very short 8 gauge power cables, but the ones that I'm using are almost 4 times longer so I'm using 6 gauge to lower the resistance and avoid sacrificing current. Once the switching cables were in, it was time to finally install the welder and power it up before closing it in. After turning on the welder, the first thing that needs to be done is to choose whether to use manual or automatic mode, and then calibrate the K-weld. I couldn't calibrate in automatic mode for some reason, so I chose manual for this purpose instead, and later switched to automatic mode with no problems. The calibration needs to be done so that K-weld can determine the overall resistance of the circuit and the current potential, and whether or not it could damage the welder. If the current is too high, then an overcurrent error will appear and you will have to follow their instructions in the manual to adjust your cables and lower the current accordingly. If the current is fine and everything goes well with the calibration, it will display OK on the screen and show some resistance and current information. Then the welder is ready to use. But it's a good idea to click the dial to go through the menu and set the low voltage alarm for the battery and make sure the cable length is set to match. Otherwise, you'll need to change that setting and recalibrate so that the K-Well can determine the proper current limit for your setup for both safety and function. After I changed the settings for my cable setup and recalibrated, I turned the joule setting up on the main screen to the recommended 50 joules for welding 0.2mm pure nickel strips as shown in the instruction manual. The dual setting allows you to adjust how much energy is delivered to a weld pulse for consistent results. I'm first going to test by trying to weld a piece of 0.2mm nickel plated steel to an old 32650 cell. After the first weld pulse, I held my foot down on the foot switch, which causes the display to cycle through information about the weld that was just done, such as the resistance, the temperature, and the amount of current that was used. The display is showing 1100 amps for the first weld, which is a bit lower than what I was hoping to get, but I finished welding the strip to see how strong the connection is at that current level. As expected, the weld is reasonably strong. If the welds don't tear out of the strip when it's peeled off, then they're not strong enough. I was getting similar results with my old welder using the same nickel plated steel strips, but it couldn't weld 0.2mm pure nickel strips when it was working properly, so I'll increase to 100 joules and try welding that next after switching to automatic mode and see how that compares. In automatic mode, the welder emits a quiet beep while it's on, and when both electrodes are touching the strip, there will be a short delay with a louder rising tone until the weld pulse. Keeping the electrodes on the strip will cause the display to cycle through information about the weld it just performed. After switching to automatic mode and turning the joules up to 100, I tried another nickel plated steel strip which welded much better than the previous one.
Then I tried a pure nickel strip and the welds looked really good on the surface, but the pull test shows the welds weren't as strong as they should be. A bit more current was needed to weld the pure nickel strip, so I reconfigured the wiring to bypass the 300 amp switch in the back and shortened the length of the power cable by half. When I attempted to calibrate it though, I got an overcurrent error, which means that the battery is more than powerful enough to provide the 1500 amp welding current that Keenlab recommends, but it's just too much current for the welder. I then doubled the power cable back to its original length, but I still bypassed the 300 amp switch and was able to successfully recalibrate. The first weld at 100 joules on the same pure nickel strip as before showed over 1400 amps was delivered. Peeling the strip off showed that the welds were really strong. So in order to get the performance that I want, I'll need to replace that switch with something that has less resistance or relocate it to the top of the enclosure so that I can shorten the power cables that connect to it and lower the resistance that way. That's it for this video folks. I put links to where I bought the welder and cells from, as well as links for downloading the STL files for the enclosure in case anyone is interested. I know you folks have been really patient with me regarding the electric motorcycle project, and I really appreciate that. I'm back to work on the battery now, and we'll be gearing up to powder coat the chassis and print the fairings soon after the electrical is tested, so I hope you'll stick around to see it finished. Take care folks.